Hey guys, you know it's your friend Joe Jaguar and I got here another refractor for, to show you guys. I think it's a really awesome refractor. Now what is it? As you can see, it's an Orion Eon triplet refractor. Now if you kind of look at the mead, uh, I'll, actually I'll show you guys. There's really some similarities with 6000 triplet. And, you know, the reason is there's only three factories that make optics, and that's basically it for the mass produced uh, for most of the companies out there. So it's no wonder, you know, all the big names, Celestron, Mead, Orion, Skywatcher, well, they all go to the same three factories. Anyway, I want to show you quickly um, what I mean. As you can see, I know I got one ring up, up right side up, one the other down, it doesn't matter, but if you look at the... The knobs and the ring, uh, the rings are basically the equivalent, you know, of the Mead uh, 6000. So pretty much they're made in the same factory, but different specs. Anyway, regardless, I think this is a really good telescope. Now, if you guys are looking for a refractor and not just a regular refractor and not just a double it, I'm talking about a triplet refractor that's going to give you very, very good image quality, crystal clear images. This could be one of them. Now, this is a size in the middle. This is 115 millimeter, which is a four and a half inch. Now, if you guys are serious about, you know, pushing the power and splitting stars and getting really close to the planets and seeing detail, the four to five inch is where I say you got to be or where probably most people. So this is right dead in the center of, uh, of that. This is four and a half. So it's not too big, but it's not small either. It's not too heavy and um, it's about 15 pounds, uh, I believe. So right now I have it on uh, something similar like a CG4 uh, on an aluminum um, tripod. And it can handle it. It's pretty much at the limit of that. But if it's for visual, it's okay. Now, if you put it on an EQ5, even better. But um, now, it's really made, it, again, in the same factory. Uh, but the, what's different is every company kind of tells the, the uh, factory how they want it made. So if you look, for instance, at the Mead 6000 series, that one has a 2.5 inch of focuser dual speed and you know for the average person like myself i you know two and a half inch is more than enough a two inch for most people is probably fine the only time you might need bigger than two inch two and a half or three inch or three and a half inch whatever is if you're going to be getting very very serious in imaging and astrophotography if you're mostly a visual person and you're going to be doing a little bit of astrophotography. That two and a half inch is, I find, more than enough. It's only for those, you know, you want the three inch for those wide field, full frames type of thing. But so for most visual people, you don't even need. Now, this guy comes with a three inch focuser. So this sucker is, and it's also rotatable. The dual speed is really nice. Uh, the course and the slow uh, speed. This is no focuser. Like this is not. Uh, we're not talking about like the Skywatcher uh, Evo Star focuser. Uh, you know that is what I would call entry level dual speed. This is something I would probably say is in the mid quality range. Something like a William Optics type of thing. Again, it's a three inch focuser. It's notched, so that way uh, I can bring it up to you if you guys want to see it. Okay, so here's a close-up of the uh, focuser here. As you can see, it's notched. Uh, I'm having trouble with this. There we go. Let's see if that's better. So as you can see, it's notched. Uh, you have your core speed here, uh, your fine speed here. It can, it's rotatable. Uh, if you want to have your camera at a certain different angle, you have your finder scope base here. Um, and 
uh, you know, so for if you want if you're serious about astrophotography and you want full frames type of thing, uh, the Orion has a custom made for that, where again, other scopes might be two and a half inch, which is fine for most people who are not very serious in astrophotography or imaging, but Orion wanted theirs to be like that. Now, it'll probably cost more, of course, but you're already 100% set. You're never going to need to upgrade this focuser. It can probably take a nice heavy camera. And I also do have the uh, focal reducer for this guy. So this guy is basically set for imaging. Um, let's take a look at the lens here. Now, of course, it is a sliding. Uh, everything in this price range uh, does... You know, has all the features. Well, let me put it over here. So, of course, it, it does slide down. Um, it probably goes a little bit more, but I have to move the ring. But it does slide down for portability. That's basically what it's for. But if you're paying this kind of bucks, uh, you would want it to slide down anyway for to carry more. Yeah, so definitely it can go another three and a half inches more. Um, I would just have to, you know, again, okay, all I would have to do is just loosen these, raise this guy up, have to loosen it more, okay, raise this guy up, tighten it back down. That way I can show you guys the more of the lens uh, there. So let me show you guys the lens, what it looks like. And there you go. So... There you go, the Orion Eon, 115 millimeter ED triplet refractor, and it's fully multi-coated. So if you guys are looking for a refractor that is mid-range, um, and, and you know, why this is also a good size, I say between the four and the five inch is the perfect. Here, here as you can see, I got the Mead 6000, uh, 130, so it's a 5.1 inch, right next to the Astrophysics, 130 so that's a five inch as well now when you look over here sorry let me turn off the, the light um you know as you can see over here six inch is huge now if i stand next to it you'll see what i'm talking about okay i gotta actually put the camera pretty far from me and as you can see the six inch evo star and the six inch takahashi this is why i say after the 5 inch or the 5.1 inch, I mean, there is a couple companies that make 140 millimeters, but one is extremely expensive because it's a very expensive Apple chromatic. But, you know, in general, I would say, you know, doublet or triplet, you know, whatever, or, or even a Acromat uh, refractor. After the 5 inch, it becomes huge, the 6 inch. And not many people are going to have the 6 inch and beyond. It's going to be very heavy, it's not going to be portable, and you're going to need lots of counterweights. Like on this guy, I probably need three 12-pound counterweights, not including the 40-pound mount head. So it's extremely heavy, and this is why I say the 4 to 5 inch is the sweet spot for uh, refractors. Now, let's go back here. So, you know, so this is probably, again... A sweet spot being a four and a half inch with all these features, sliding do cap, really well built, nice rings, three inch focuser, dual speed, notched, rotatable. You know, this is uh, probably for a lot of people a perfect, uh, you know, refractor. It's going to give you ultra sharp images being a triplet. Uh, you're probably not going to uh, find anything better unless you go to the top, top end name brands that is gonna squeeze 5% out of uh, the image. But for most people, something like this would still be fairly expensive. Now, I don't think Orion makes this one because now they make a dual ED uh, triplet, which is even more expensive. Um, but if you look at like the, the similar size one, uh, Mead makes a 115, comes from the same factory, it's just slightly different. Okay, the focuser is smaller. Okay, and the Mead one, Canadian, I think it's $27.99. You're looking at about $3,200 with tax just for this guy. Not including, uh, I, I don't believe it comes with a case. Um, no diagonal or anything like that. Doesn't come with the reducer as well. 
focal reducer for uh, imaging astrophotography. So you're looking, it's not a cheap scope by, by the way, but I think it would be very good scope if you're looking for something in this size, a little bit bigger than the four inch, a little bit smaller and less than the uh, five inch or the 5.1 inch, um, so, you know, this could be it. This will show you amazing detail on the moon, on the planets, double star splitting. And remember too, being it's a four and a half inch clear aperture, this is almost as equivalent to almost a six inch reflecting telescope, regardless if it's a Dobsonian or an EQ version, will be almost, you're just talking just a fractions uh, of a millimeter difference. Um, you're getting pure light. And remember guys, a lot of people think, you know, the only difference in apochromatic, regardless if it's an ED or triplet, all it's correcting for is just better color correction. And that's totally false. Those people that when you read that on the forums, they don't fully know their optics. Um, it's not just that. Maybe I'm going to do a video on why a doublet ED uh, or 53 doublet or a triplet 3, uh, 53 or 51, whatever. Why is an Apple chromatic? It's not just a color correction. Its image quality is tenfold as well. People don't really realize that. They just think it's lessening the color and give you a nice, cleaner uh you know, I guess color or a, a better color correction. That is half of it, but it's not the full story. Image quality is the other half. And I'll get into that in another video why. Uh, so again, this guy is probably almost comparable to a six inch reflector, but you don't have to worry about no collimation. It's gonna give you the most pinpoint images that you're gonna get in something like this. It's a perfect size being four and a half inch. Not too big, not too small, pretty heavy. And remember, for imaging and astrophotography, it's not all about how big of a telescope you have. Your cameras are gonna be doing 80 to 85% of the work. And you also need a, a much, much bigger amount. I would probably say an HEQ5, an Atlas or EQ6 or uh, EQ6 Pro, you know, something you want it to be rock solid, you don't want it even to move a millimeter in that image um, in, in your shots as well. So, but this is a very good size. You don't need super huge telescopes for imaging and astrophotography because your camera is doing the work. So this could be basically perfect for some people. A good size for visual and then a good size for um, imaging and astrophotography. So there you go, guys. There is an Eon made by Orion. It's a triplet refractor, a huge focuser, and it has all the bells and whistles that you can need. Um, and that's it. So if you guys are looking for a razor sharp, uh, you know, refractor without paying seven, 8,000, like the big name brands, this could be the one for you. Um, and that's it. Joe Jaguar, like, comment, and subscribe. And you tell me what you guys think about uh, the Orion Eon. And I'll see you on the next video.